things are going in the right direction with the diminution of cases, hospitalizations, and deaths. The steepness of the deflection is not as good as it was, let's say, a month or so ago. We have about 60-plus million people in the country who are eligible for vaccinations who have not yet been vaccinated. Let's call the future of COVID uncertain. New York Times columnist David Leonhardt has noticed a troubling trend. He writes this, quote, the gap in COVID's death toll between red and blue America has grown faster over the last month than at any previous point. The immunity from vaccination appears to be much stronger than the immunity from infection, which means that conservative Americans will probably continue to suffer an outsized amount of unnecessary illness and death. Indeed, to put a finer point on it, the death toll in some red Trump counties is over three times higher than blue counties where vaccination rates are higher. With more, we're so happy to have back with us tonight Dr. Nahib Bedelia, an infectious disease physician, founding director of Boston University Center for Emerging Infectious Diseases Policy and Research. Doctor, I said before the break, this was probably inevitable, no less heartbreaking. Talk about this contagion of the anti-vax community and how it's not stopping at just the COVID vaccine. Yeah, Brian, I think that you've seen increasing anti-vax sentiment even before the COVID pandemic. In fact, in 2019, WHO uh, ranked, you know, an vaccine hesitancy as a top 10 issue globally. And there was a 50 percent increase in measles cases. I mean, we had basically controlled measles in 2000. And right before the pandemic, we had the most cases of that disease. And what's happened during this pandemic is twofold. One, I think, you know, there's this potential hesitancy and politicization of the COVID-19 vaccine has created more space for many of these anti-vax advocates. But what you're also seeing is this increasing identification of your political ideology with vaccination is, is actually eroding support for other childhood vaccination. There was a YouGov poll uh, just last week that showed that over the last year, the support among Republicans for routine childhood vaccination requirements dropped from 59 percent last August to 46 percent. That's less than half this year. And, and that's worrisome because we're also looking at a global picture where, you know, there have been massive disruptions in childhood vaccinations because of the pandemic itself. In fact, globally, 23 million kids have missed their vaccination. So we're walking into some dangerous waters for other infectious diseases as well. Doc, as you remember, China gave Trump an enemy, a distraction for the malpractice that was going on here at the start and the height of the pandemic. China's back in the news. This is Financial Times. China's efforts to eliminate COVID-19 are coming under increasing pressure, with officials warning of a grave challenge in the months ahead. The current wave of cases has reached the majority of the country's 31 provinces. In the broadest outbreak since the early days of the COVID-19, COVID-19 pandemic last year. They go on to say, Dr. China, on a per capita basis, is the most vaccinated nation on Earth. It's also the largest percentage of humanity in one country. Are we looking at the possibility that what grows in China could come to the rest of the world, variants included? I think there's a, you know, China's, China's been maybe the most draconian in terms of its containment efforts, right? They, and I think their, their, their efforts have been successful, but it's, those are not efforts that could have been carried out anywhere else, sort of, you know, within the nation, travel restrictions, just massive lockdowns suddenly, massive testing. And, and they've suffered economically a lot as well. And so what you're seeing now with this Delta wave really knocking at the door, you're seeing this in Russia as well, just major outbreaks. Uh, it's coming up against potentially a population where the disease hasn't gone through as much. You know, the Delta wave hasn't affected them as much and now it's sneaking through. But even though they're vaccinated, the other concern is the two major vaccines used in China are inactivated virus vaccines that seem to be, they don't have the same amount of antibody response and, and particularly in older patients may not protect as much against severe disease. The thing that's alarming is that, you know, China's vaccines, half of the 7.3 billion doses globally are actually CoronaVac and Sinopharm. And so if there is waning immunity from these vaccines in China, we have to look at other countries that were heavily vaccinated with those vaccines as well. Uh, one of these nights, I promise, nothing but good news. We'll get there. Dr. Nahid Bedelia will be with us when we do that. Our thanks for taking our questions here tonight.